something wicked. There was something wicked. I've been a student all my whole life, but I've never been affiliated with any university. So I studied in Chapel Hill, not at UNC, but in all the libraries, Duke and Chapel Hill and, and uh, all the bookstores and stuff. And, uh, uh, but yes, I did study medieval alchemy. That was something I got into uh, just on my own. There was nobody forcing me to study that. I was just reading Latin. I uh, taught myself to read Latin and was interested in the histories. And, uh, and arts, and uh, you know, I notice a lot of the French poets reference alchemy, and uh, Rimbaud particularly would re re reference alchemy, and uh, it got me interested in what alchemy was all about. And then it was just sort of it's the closest religion, I guess, or science that I've ever had that made sense to me because it's half science, half religion, half uh, herbs, botany. Uh, it's like a pre-science when it was still very mystical for, for white people. To, you to know, I about. I've studied herbs. Uh -huh, uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> we we'll have to study herbs after this day of interview. <laughs> Go. It's just the way I grew up. The type of music I grew up with was uh, my, my father and them played old time music: banjos, fiddles, string basses, mandolins, and uh, we played. They played old blues, honky tonk, gospel, country. And I've always had that kind of bent to my mind in a way. I was always interested in history and family history, genealogy, stuff of my own family I was interested in at a really early age. And just collecting weird shit, you know, like just, you know, from the buttons from my grandmother's wedding chest or whatever was always important to me. You know, things that the rest of the family was throwing away, you know, would be like treasure to me. Like some little postcard from 1910. So would fire my imagination up. So I always had a fascination with past uh, history, my own family history, Southern history, particularly. We're not going to see you on an episode of Hoarders, are we? No, no, <laughs> no, no. I throw shit away all the time. I don't. Possessions don't mean anything to me in and of themselves. Like Jim Dickinson had the piano from Stax, where George, when all the Isaac Hayes and all sit around and wrote, sat around and wrote, "Hold on, I'm coming," and all the hits for Stax, and they were throwing it out when they the bank closed Stax, and Jim went and got it, put it in his yard, and it just slowly <laughs> decomposed over the years, and that was one of his prized art projects. Was this like ashes to ashes, and dust to dust? This is how much they thought of it. They put it on the sidewalk. So it was an honor to let it rot in his, you know, out in his studio, feed the soil of his studio with his piano, you know. So there's heavy shit out there in the world, you know. The Tri-State is we, we got a new, fired up on a new record uh, contract with Fat Possum, uh, somebody that actually can get us, can promote us, can help us get somewhere, get our music out there more. But we're just fired up about this recording we did. Kickstarter event. We raised sixteen thousand dollars from our fans to have a producer to collaborate with this producer who had a real vision for their songs and sculpted and, and streamlined and made these songs very potent. Uh, and it's just we're fired up on it. We're looking forward to like 2013. It's just rolling down the road. You know, getting this new album's called White Buffalo. It's ten songs. And I have to say, it's, it's, it's the best thing I've done, you know, so we're all fired up on it and just, I, that's the focus. So when you ask about other things right now, it's like I've had to let things drop off the radar just to stay up with what Tri-State's doing, you know. That's where I'm putting all my energy now. All the music and everything goes into that. How widely are you touring? Uh, well, we've been busy, you know, all over, but this year will take us more farther, farther flung, so that's the point is to try to you know, raise our, our le level a little bit, you know? And uh, I think the band deserves it. I think they're good enough. We've been working real hard many years, you know, struggling with this. Uh, the Zippers was almost fell in my lap, you know? It was a, this, this, my music, this music has been much harder to, to bring out, to bring across. It's more uh, personal. It, it is, much more so, and it's just it's more of a struggle, and that's what makes it what it, that's fine, you know, I don't mind the struggle with it, so. Just hoping that this thing with Fat Possum, they're really, they're a good competitive label, they're doing things in the world, 
you know, and they believe in us, you know, and they think we can do something with this white buffalo. So that gives me hope, and that keeps us fired up and, and, and ready to do more work. Let's go, you. <laughs>